what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a, like a general background about what I do and uh, also about how I get here. Uh, and then I will comment specifically two pieces. They have many layers, so I, I we prefer to focus in, in these two pieces uh, deeply. And then uh, I would summarize, close, and we are open to conversation. I grew up, I was born during the, during the Cold War. All of us were, right? And uh, somehow we became modeled by all these uh, different references that crosses us culturally and, and uh, linguistically, politically. And basically I was born and I always, I like joking about this. I, I like saying that I was conceived during the missile crisis. I was born in 1963. And uh, you know, like in the realm, in the ideological realm where I grew up, uh, the world had only one color and uh, everything was uh, in our education, uh, which became an indoctrination, uh, everything was related to that ideological uh, perception of the world. Uh, however, traveling and uh, uh, since the 90s, going to Peru, in South America, to, to Guyana, to uh, north of Mexico, the Caribbean, I started discovering that my perception of the world uh, was very biased. And, uh, and you know, like when you're young and uh, romantic and you believe in this big utopia of the Cuban revolution, uh, at some point you discover that the world is bigger and more complex, but also you discover that the other side has their own version of the world. And then step by step, you discover that actually uh, that's what knowledge is, right? Like everything that we, we perceive as reality is actually a construction, uh, most of the time an ideological construction of, of, of the world through perception. So I like start starting with this uh, quote by uh, uh, Anton Sillinger, he's a quantum physicist, that says uh, rea uh, reality is the philosophical concept, concept which we attach to something which is real. So this is, uh, of course, the idea of reality has been like discussed and we are still in that. What is reality? Uh, what is our perception of it? And I, 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 I always like using these maps as a, as, a, as a first approach because basically we, this is the world we learn until we discover that this is a convention from the center of Europe, I mean from Europe as a center then the, we discover the correction. This is the Peter Gall's corruption of the world that actually points at the, at the, the real, the actual proportion of the geography in the maps. And then we discover the perception of MacArthur Universal Corrective Map that places um, Australia in the middle, reminding us that everything we know about geography is, is a convention, is, uh, is a an ideological construction of the world that uh, favored uh, an approach, a, a view of the world and geography. And I like, I like starting with this map because it, you know, all over the map, I ended up upside down in this, in this uh, understanding of, of reality and who I am, how my education and my country uh, in, influenced uh, the politics of the Cold War in the whole world, across the world, including Canada. Uh, South America, where some of us come from, or all of us come from, the Caribbean. So th this idea also uh, pushed me to start questioning other things. I mean, uh, uh, and he used this reference because uh, uh, when we think in death, for instance, uh, which is previously I was talking about geography and the conventions we follow in politics and geography and history, how we portray the world, but we do the same in science. I mean, what is the approach? What is the, the, the construction of the world from a specific field of knowledge? Uh, what is the world from science? What is the world from culture? What is the world from religion? What is the world from history? What is reality? What is the consensus that we share that make us a group that understands the same reality? And the idea of, uh, of sharing this graph uh, was, uh, as a, was a, like, a reference to what I'm going to talk in the second piece. Uh, the idea that even things as certain as death 
uh, have a definition that is also uncertain. What is death? Death uh, is a process, it's not an event. When we are considered dead, and I'm going to give a little bit of a ground for the audience, right? Like, okay, initially, when you stop breathing, you were dead. Then we discovered that we could survive that, and then it was the heart. And now it's the coma, but there are levels in the coma. There is the coma, vegetative states, and brain death. So all these uh, references keep pushing the boundaries, but we keep living in it day by day, where we consider that we know what we're doing, we know what we are, we know where we are, we know where we stand about things. And, uh, you know, especially history, science, uh, and we don't realize that there are many perceptions of that same world. There are many processes, many levels uh, that are contradicting each other. When we contra contrast them, then a new perception arises. And that's exactly what I try to do with my work. I'm going to make a, uh, because sometimes I use photography as a reference, I want to make a, a fast approach to this, right? Like the importance of photography and representation uh, in the ideological construction of the world. We have uh, this, I call this reflection, the Greenwich ideological realm. The idea that the, the meridian uh, of Greenwich separates two perceptions of the world, the West and the East. And we have this amazing phot photograph uh, from, from Japan uh, after the Second World War. It represented the victory of the uh, Americans over the Nazi, over the, the militaristic uh, Japan. And we, it's, ama an amazing, it's an amazing picture until we discovered that it was a stage because the initial picture was actually uh, this one to the left until a commander realizes that it was too, straight, it didn't have the dynamic of the war, it was not going to become a good symbol, also the flag was too small. So this one was staged, this is what we know as history, and it's a representation that has been chosen and constructed. But then we have the Easter Bloc, the Soviets, taking over the Reichstag, Reichstag. and uh, here we have the same, it's, it's competing, it's an amazing photograph, but then we discover that it was also stage, but not only stage, it was also doctor. Because in the original picture, the, the soldier supporting or uh, holding the other soldier, the officer, has two watches, and these watches means that he's being looting. So these amazing references of history are constructs from art. And this is what we consider the reality of history. Then, of course, we have, you know, the manipulations along history. We have Hitler disappearing Goebbels, his, uh, his um, minister of propaganda, which is uh, funny. Uh, we have Lenin disappearing Trotsky. We have uh, Stalin disappearing uh, Joseph, uh, a political uh, a secret police officer. We have Mao. So all these people, a long history, doctor their own reality as a propaganda tool. And then of course we have today, right? This is the, uh, the Mont Pacar in the, in the um, uh, I'm very bad with the names, in, the, in North Korea. Uh, and this is a representation, is where, where Kim Jong-un was born. So all this photography, all this tool from art are mediating in our understanding and our ideological understanding of the world, right? And then, of course, we have the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro, and, uh, uh, you know, the addiction and even all the performances that uh, Fidel Castro did in Sierra Maestra for Herbert Matthews were also used photography as a construction of, of the reality of the guerrilla. It was a way to influence in the war, in the, in the, in the perception of the Cuban Revolution. And part of that perception or, or, or that perception is related to the Cold War. It's related to the idea that the Soviets and the, and the Eastern Bloc are cont contesting for the world. Sputnik is being launched in 1959. 
It's around the South America. Uh, it was considered like a te technological advance of the world, so the Soviets were uh, forward uh, uh, than, the, than the Americans, uh, to the point that it inspired this uh, church in Maringá, Brazil, uh, that is a church model after the shape of Sputnik or the understanding of the Sputnik. And, and then we have the Cuban Revolution, the romance of the Cuban Revolution. This idea that photograph and art is captured in an instant, but in reality, we are portraying a construction of, that is based on the interests of, of Castro presenting uh, this, this uh, revolution of a, a revolution of the humble, when in reality he was already positioning in the Cold War uh, and positioning Cuba as a spearhead of the Soviets. So why do I do all this uh, uh, fast introduction? Basically, I'm going to talk about the dream by Corrales and a, a piece called Why the Moon that I, that I uh, inspire after this piece. Basically, this is the first trip of Castro in 1959 to uh, Venezuela. Uh, it was the anniversary of uh, Perez Jimenez, first anniversary of uh, his deposition by a military coup. Uh, when I see this picture that became like the perfect portrait of the, of the humble in power, in this world was a uh, realm, um, kind of even sexy in terms of the position of the, of the arms and the, uh, and the uniform and the weapon in the middle. What is happening there, when I look at it, I, I feel like, oh, this is almost romantic, and I see like a moonlight in it. But this is the moment where the Soviets and the Americans are fighting for the moon. And the moon is not more than a military metaphor of technological power, where who can put a rocket further and better. And then, of course, we have all the relations, the history, always through photography. I'm going fast among this, uh, along this to, to be able to go back to the, to the point. All this is uh, the construction, because in the American side, my friends, same age, were having exactly the, the same uh, ideological indoctrination, but in the other side of the, of the spectrum, right? Like with, uh, with this uh, cartoon that is called Bird the Turtle. It's about uh, how do you defend from a nuclear attack from the Soviets. Uh, and as I said before, I was born during the missile crisis. And all this is being part of my life. It's having actually part of all of our lives. Then, back to why the moon. What I did, and in the pieces I'm going just to describe what I did, what was the operation. I decided, okay, what happened if I rebuild this instant, this idea that, oh, the photography of this event is an instant in history that portrays everything that is behind. What about if I rebuild this instant and reinform the viewer what everything happening behind? So this was a proposal for the 2015 Havana Virginia, and it was accepted one part, another wasn't. Uh, I basically decided, okay, I'm going to show that we can build an instant. We can create an ideological instant. We can organize it and, and make it participatory for everybody. So I did it, but I also proposed to do a setup in the, in the rampa in Havana and allow people to take portraits of that instant. I'm going to go over very fast over the production of the piece. Because basically what happened is that we knew we were going to have problems with copyrights. So we wanted to fight that as part of the piece. All right, what am I copywriting here? There is an art piece in the, in the piece itself that it doesn't belong to Corrales. Uh, I'm building everything. So basically, we are deconstructing this instant that is the symbol of the young revolution of the humble in power. But now, how do we present this to the people 
in a way that people is able to access everything that is behind. So what we did, or what I did, it was, I created this assemble between a video performance, a game, all combined through uh, uh, interactivity uh, design in, in Max MSP, where basically depending on the game the people was playing, some information of the timeline of invasions, uh, military interventions, uh, nuclear tests, moon, moon trips were happening all at the same time behind this perception of the humble, this perception of the uh, young revolution in power that was having a nationalistic speech towards Cuba, but it was actually represented the Cold War worldwide and represented the, the Soviet agenda in Latin America, Africa, and the Middle East. So we decided we are going to play this game. It was called Mutually Assured Destruction based on the prisoner, prisoner's dilemma. It is this game. And basically you play the game and while you're playing the game, every time an explosion affected a building in the game, we display new information in the timeline. At the same time that the moon because at the end of the day, the mutual achieved destruction is a nuclear balance, was also based on the idea of the moon. This moon is changing the lighting of the performance. And the software was capturing the position of the performance every time on there, like repeating infinitively this uh, instant. And the idea with this uh, piece was basically Okay, what happened when I tell you your perception of the world or my perception of the world is a construction that can be reinformed. And, uh, and this is what I do with my work. Uh, in this case, it's related to history, but in the next, uh, uh, next piece, you're going to see it related to science. Uh, for me, the function of art, or one of them, is actually to create this conversation between fields of knowledge. Is, I, I, I call it like kind of like an eccentric joint where art renegotiates or becomes the realm of different fields of knowledge where the meaning and, uh, and the knowledge produced and circulated in, in one specific realm uh, can be renegotiated. And, and this is what I'm pushing for. This is what I'm pushing for. My objective with this piece is not even aesthetic, um, sorry, Omar. I'm just gonna give you a warning. We have ten minutes left, so just so you be mindful of the time that you have for the presentation. Right. Okay. Thirteen minutes left. <laughs> and then, so the idea is, uh, I'm going to push for the doubt. And the, I was saying that the the interest is not it wasn't aesthetical. This is just the operation. My interest is to push doubt. If I am able to make people just to leave the, the space with uh, doubting what they knew, then I consider that, that the piece is being effective because basically uh, uh, an art piece for me becomes political when the response to it is, is political. So I'm going to move now to the next piece where I do exactly the same, but in this case, I create a parallel between DNA and Yoruba music. And what I do is I use, uh, information related to paternity, to uh, the human peroxidase thyroid uh, gene in sequence in, your, in our genetics that is used to verify paternity. And I do a parallel process. Okay, what, what is paternity in science, but what is paternity in, in, in religion? In your real religion, you, you, are the, you are protected by uh, an angel, a guard angel, or, or by your father or mother in the religion. And there is a sense of paternity there, a filial relation. And in science, this is codified through DNA tests. So I was, my point was like, okay, what about if I create this context where a same event is many things at the same time? So what I did was I created a parallel and I translated using principles, the principles of translation of the DNA information into Yoruba Dromen was segmentation, color representation, letters as conceptual operations, 
the number four and, and the idea of paternity in terms of interpretation. So I start analyzing all the relations between DNA representation and Yoruba representation. And I decided to go with the number four because there are four page, uh, pairs of, of um, bases in, in the DNA, adenine, timine, cytosine, and guanine. But the number, the number four is as well important in the Yoruba divination system, the oracle and the equally divination system. So what I do is I, I assign a sound to each of these genes or, 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 or bases, and I turn it into a MIDI. So from there I decide, okay, I have four pairs of, of bases. What instrument plays to paternity in Yoruba religion? What it does, uh, what it does it is uh, uh, dr uh, bata drumming. But the bata have four ends because there are two batas that sing and, uh, and one that keeps the rhythm. So they ja and they totally have two ends. So I assign each cytosine, adenine, timine, and guanine to each end and the Okonkolo or baby drum did only the six by eight rhythm of the Yoruba uh, drumming. So this is the way it was uh, distributed in the representation. Now, I have to say, I didn't create anything here. What I did was to assign the sum of the patch to the position of a gene in the sequence. So it's not an interpretation. Why? Because I don't like uh, a lot of DNA art that I see that they create melodies out of other references. I didn't create a melody out of references. I basically used the position of if this sequence would be a pentagram. So I read it as music in a direct translation of scientific data to art. This is the process. And this is how the drum song Now, the idea was like, how do I, because the, the piece is not the music, how do I present this? The, the, what, what we did it was, okay, we do a performance talk where we invite a geneticist, a philosopher, a musician, and a Yoruba priest. And together with me, we talk about what we are seeing. What is this data? So each field of knowledge, uh, it, it, it gets close uh, to, to their own interpretation. So this is the position of the DNA basis on, on a pentagram, then as I explained, I decided, okay, if cytonine and guanine and timine and adenine are pairs of bases in the, bases in the DNA that are opposed to each other, I'm going to oppose those, the position of that as a, 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 a touch in the pad of the bata. So this is what you get. Of course, there is added the six by eight of the Oconcolo that puts everything in tempo. Now, the presentation was, as I was saying, okay, uh, we bring this conversation, I make the explanation, I explain uh, exhaustively all the operation, and then I invite, invite we, play, we perform it, and then I invite the geneticist, the musician, the Yoruba priest, the philosopher and me, and we talk about what we are seeing. And um, what is interesting for me, it was like, first of all, people get very excited with the idea. It's like, wow, I'm very surprised. Until they discover, yeah, but this doesn't make any sense, right? And, uh, uh, and that's the whole point. The whole point is that, you know, people is inspired to talk about it, but at the end of the day, I want everybody to leave the place thinking like, okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing 
data and knowledge from a field of knowledge into another one and it makes sense but it, it shouldn't or it does on what what is the question so if i'm able to push for critical thinking and doubt that's exactly the objective of course people didn't believe i was actually doing this so i was questioned many times like well yeah but how do we know that we're not you're not lying to us so i produce this i overlap exactly And then in the second part, I started singing the position of them as notes in a vector. Basically, and this would be my, my closing, uh, the pieces, these two pieces seem to be very distant, but they are not. They are doing exactly the same in terms of the operation that I'm following. For me, the most important is actually that operation, the conversation that I'm able to push in that space uh, because um, art has become like very related to, despite the history of art, uh, actually, very, um, elitist in, in some spaces. So I want to bring this conversation to a general realm. Uh, I try to intervene uh, public spaces, uh, have these conversations because for me, uh, this idea of reality that I started with, uh, art has become a hyper reality by itself, like a thematic park where everything makes sense inside that space. So the idea is like, how can I use art as this eccentric joint where I can bring a conversation that renegotiates or pushes people to reconsider what they think they know about the world, ideologically, politically. And this has been the process that myself uh, uh, suffered um, working among the Makuchi in South America. Uh, finding out, for instance, that the Makuchi uh, um, that has been 12,000 years there, community were able to speak uh, a very old form of Dutch because they, they were colonized. And you arrive there thinking, like, oh, I'm visiting Amerindians, and they speak five languages. You know, Makuchi, uh, Patamona, Guayguay, English, Portuguese, because they are in the border with Brazil and, and this old Dutch. So this idea that you think you know, well, uh, check that again. And, and that's, that's my intention with what I do. And especially with, with history, uh, you know, because even coming to this country, coming to Canada, uh, I, I discover and studying, of course, that even Canada, that seems always so so far, so so distant uh, from this idea of the Cold War, have their own contradiction with the the, the first uh, people of Canada. But also during the Cold War, the uh, northern territories were forcibly occupied and forced by the government to avoid uh, that the Soviets would take. Uh, on the North Territory. So the Cold War, my own life and oral life has been affected by this. And this is my way to bring this conversation in all realms of reality. Science, everything we know, politics, history specifically, you know, is a construction that is ideologically motivated and, and formulated. Well, thank you very much, Omar. A really very provocative uh, work. Thank you very much for sharing it with me and with the audience. And let me tell you something. What I like the most about your work is its transversal uh, character. Mm. I think that uh, what is uh, most important here is the way in which you are putting together and you are interrelating uh, 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 discourses and investigations and uh, music uh, which are not usually put together you know so to me this, this is a very radical uh, experiment in which this transversality 
uh, works as, as a deconstruction instrument uh, to all sides. So because it's, it's, uh, it's not only the scientific uh, construction of the DNA, which is uh, um, put into question or, 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 or I mean, or discussed, but it's also a Yoruba music, the mm -hmm. way in which it's organized, and, and you, you know. So uh, I think that this, this is uh, um, something very important because uh, also now that we discuss so much what is political art, what is the, 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 the political in arts, the relationships with, with, uh, between art and politics, uh, between art and uh, activism, the, the, the activism, you know? So uh, this is something which is uh, uh, really hot nowadays. And, uh, but you are working on that for in, in a more profound way. Uh, so you are like uh, using art uh, as, 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 as a, a, a tool to research. And, and to, uh, to examine all the, the way in which discourses in several fields are constructed. And I think this is, uh, uh, this is very challenging and you are really uh, 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 using the, 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 the capacity uh, and, and the possibilities of art uh, to go beyond the aesthetic and, and, and to go beyond the, the tropological and become like a sort of, let's say, scientific tool mm -hmm. in order to examine and to discuss all these uh, 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 problems. And, and this uh, brings to the forefront the, the nociological character of art. Absolutely. Sometimes we think that art is about, you know, the, 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 the aesthetic aspect or the symbolic aspect, and for sure it is. But art has also this uh, uh, nociological aspect, which is so, so, so crucial uh, for art. And, and, and you are going really uh, deep uh, in, into that. So I, I think, you know, it's very difficult to judge the, the, your first work. I mean, the second is easier for me, you know, to, to try to, 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 to grab it, uh, you know, but the first one, uh, you know, is so complex and, you know, you need to play the, 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 the game. And so it's, it's difficult for me to, to, to judge. Uh, uh, so, but, but uh, uh, let's say that uh, without having uh, been able to do that, but uh, the, the general idea and the way in which you presented it, uh, uh, at least what I can say is that, the, that you are doing something which is really uh, uh, worthwhile and, and it's very valuable. And uh, I think that the, how to say that the danger here, I, I would say, you know, is that you can go uh, uh, too far away from, from the, 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 the art uh, realm mm. and, and I am not asking you to put some colors here or or you know go back to the aesthetics or you know but sometimes it, it can just uh, become something else which is I mean it's okay as far as it works and yes, as yes. far as it conveys uh, you know the meanings that you are trying to discuss but I think that art has some this very specific power, you know, that I think that you can, uh, why to, to, to leave it behind, you know, let's use it, you know, which in the second work is, I think it has been a, a more activated, you know, because when you know your idea and, and, and you see the, this video you have and, and you hear the music and you see how things, uh, interrelate in a transversal way, you, you know, because it's, uh, as you said, you are not creating something new. What you are doing is just combining pre-existing uh, systems that you put together 
in a very <laughs> slate, like in a slate of hands, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. this transversal uh, way, you know. So, and, and, and then, but then when you see that, you can also, you are using the, the, the visual uh, power of art, you know, uh, to facilitate that the audience can't understand and can get a new message. Probably in the, in the first work, it's, it's all also, I mean, it functions like that, and there's a game involved, so it's more like interactive and uh, the audience's uh, participation. I think that is also very important uh, for it, you know. Uh, and but but well, I can I can uh, give you like a, like a, a full uh, uh, opinion uh, about that. I liked very much also the way in which you. In the second uh, work, uh, you summon this uh, scientist and the musician and the priest, you know, to discuss and so to, to create a space of encounter and a space of discussion as part of the work. And, and I, I like also uh, very much uh, that uh, aspect uh, of your work, you know, that to, to, to uh, to deal with the, with knowledge, uh, to deal. I always, with... I always explain to people that the 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 piece for me is that conversation. Uh, okay. All the all the other uh, aspects of it, like like the the music, the the whole process of translation, uh, the representation in public, um, the way uh, on how it looks aesthetically are just my hooks to bring people into the conversation. Uh, I try to do the same with the first uh, one. Uh, I use gaming um, for that, but, but also uh, the idea, the whole idea that there is a way back to art because when you think of, for instance, Fidel Castro that is a center, central to my history and our history and our education and to the continent, I always think like exactly as you were uh, uh, mentioning about Novo, uh, Fidel Castro had a, 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 an amazing grasp on publicity. How do, does it work? When he went to the state, he hired a PR company uh, to, 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 to handle his, uh, his public uh, appearance into the United States. So the idea, this idea of, okay, art is being used as a political tool. How can we contest that through art? And that's, that's why I refine the aesthetic in terms of, uh, lure people into the operation. So people consider it beautiful, consider it playful, uh, smooth, uh, aesthetically beautiful. But what I want is to place them in a context where they are going to be challenged of, in terms of all of that, even the representation of the idea of the instant or the idea of history, uh, the, the, this opacity that we are. You, you were, you you were you were talking not long ago. I was watching one of your interventions online about the, this Latin America and the idea of post-colonial and decolonial um, uh, culture and and the, the new approaches to the Latin American history. And it's true. I mean, like we forget that the colonial power is a power is a white power, uh, basically Creole, but our national anthems are military marches from the 19th century European discourse. So it's like, we are more than that. And that opacity, that, that level of layers where you can find languages, cultures, approaches, different approaches to reality as, uh, as happened with color uh, uh, among the Yucarare and the, and the Makuchi, that they don't see color the same way we do, like at the, at the Himbas in Africa. To bring all that, all, all that, uh, what the decolonials call the, the uh, um, how do they call it, the, like epistemic uh, disobedience. That idea of bringing all that through something that it, it sounds familiar to people, an art operation. But when I bring, how do I use that to bring all these parallel complexities that are transversally there, that are part of that reality, but that we have been pushed to not know, to forget, so history is this, is what you see is, I, I had a photographer there to register it. 
right? And, and the same with religion and the same with, uh, with, uh, with science. Okay, death is this. No, no, death is a process and we don't know yet enough to determine when the process, that's why we have something, a, a concept like legal death. We need a consensus. We need a consensual reality to function. But how, when that consensus become an ideological control, uh, a construct that which uh, interest is to keep us away from knowing. And that's, that's what I try to do. Or how do I put people in the position of renegotiating all that from all these interferences in, a, in something that it looks aesthetically attractive or lure them into the operation. And that's, that's, that's what yeah. I try. And by the way, I, you know, I, I saw your piece on the national anthems and, uh, oh. and it was, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I saw it in your uh, website and, uh, uh, and it's very interesting because the way in which you put them together, not only the music, but also the lyrics, uh, you know, combining them, uh, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's like a very, how to say, it's like a very, uh, uh, I don't find the word. Well, let's, let's say it's, it's, uh, it's affirmative of the possibility of a Latin American integration or a, a Latin American uh, a, a sense of identity, you know? And, and uh, your work brought to my mind a, a, a piece by Santiago Sierra. It's an untitled sound piece from 2007 in which he puts together the national anthems of the Southern con countries in Latin America. So Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, uh, Brazil, and uh, Paraguay. So what he, what he does is to mix them together at the same time. So what he creates uh, through that uh, process is just noise. So the message is the opposite to the one right. that I perceive in your work. So uh, Santiago Sierra said, oh, this is, you know, it's just noise. This is chaos. This is uh, failure. Uh, you know, this is a myth, uh, you know. So it's a, it's a piece which is very critical you know, to, <laughs> to this idea of the, uh, this uh, national proud in Latin America. Uh, so uh, um, it might be interesting for you to have a look to it. It's uh, untitled 2007 uh, by uh, Santiago Sierra. Uh, what I try to do with that, oh, sorry. pardon me? What pardon I try me? to do with that, what I try to do with that, yes. piece, it was like, uh, you know, like I took uh, on the Paraguay Asuncion River. It has two trips. One is crossing the 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 the, the, the river. It has it has like a boat that crosses the river, east to west, back and forth. And it has another boat that goes to Argentina. So it makes a crossroad on the river. So what I decided to do, it was like, okay, if I'm talking about, I call that piece decolonial cartography, thinking in the idea of, 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 of a, a epistemic uh, uh, disobedience. And what I did, it was like talking to, to a lot of native from, from uh, Paraguay. They, they don't believe in, in the written uh, test. They don't believe in anything that has to be signed. They they believe in your word. Um, what you say is 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 law. And the idea was like, okay, we have here a different approach to to the value the value of things, uh, 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 and it's based on words. So how do I context this idea of the nations that have been imposed some of these territories, uh, where? Amerindian territories that were uh, during colonization were separated into countries and, and now you have the Brasiguayos, people that live in the border, or you have the Makuchi in the north Rupununi that are, their territory is south of Guyana but north of Brazil, but they are none of them, they are Makuchi. And uh, so my idea was like, okay, if I use all the national anthems horizontally and uh, the music is arranged in this way, I can, I can make it one national anthem of integration vertically with the words. And that's, that's what I did to create the, the same crossroad. And what I did was to place it in these boats that cross the river so that the people that was going to Argentina back and forth because they work there or in, uh, across the Asuncion Ruby were also 
in this uh, cross cross road. But it's also about that, about the the the, the layers of of the layers of, of cultures, languages, uh, practices, social approaches to life that are out of the national model, the idea of as a nation, Latin American nation. And uh, it was the idea of how do we come, how do we grow further from that uh, uh, without becoming like what people consider like be, to be the colonial, the colonialists go to go back to. Uh, to Amerindian practices. Sorry. Yes. No, that's okay. I just want to be mindful about the time. So we do have a couple of minutes, actually one or two minutes to kind of wrap up. So yeah, I leave you to to kind of uh, close or give a wrap up to the to the lecture. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, yes. Uh, uh, as I said, I I really appreciate. Uh, uh, the, this uh, transversal character of uh, your artistic investigation and the way in which you relate uh, things, different discourses, different uh, approaches to realms of life and society, and in order to, to create like a frisson, like, a, you know, a tension, like, a, you know, that will spark uh, a, a deconstructive knowledge, uh, you know, that uh, really uh, explodes to to uh, to every side of it. You know, I, I find this uh, 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 the, the the research orientation of your work, you know, this analytic aspect and the use of the work as a tool for. Uh, knowledge and, and deconstruction and decolonization uh, in, in some cases, uh, you know, it's really uh, worthwhile, you know. I only would, as I said, advise you to give a certain control not to expand uh, too much, you know, because I see that, that your personality is very expansive, oh <laughs> you know. <laughs> so to try to, to keep like, like a center, you know, some control because uh, you know that uh, will uh, uh, give more focus uh, to your uh, work. But uh, thank you very much. It's, it has been very uh, uh, provocative and stimulating. So thanks. No, thank you. You know, I want to appreciate Amara and Claudia. Thanks a lot for the invitation, and and, and it's a privilege, uh, honestly, uh, to to have the conversation with you, Gerardo. Um, you know, like uh, what you say is, is totally true. Uh, I like researching. Uh, I think we know nothing, honestly. And, uh, and I, I feel that sometimes, you know, there is a density in the work uh, that, that, that is, you know, is never enough for me to learn because, because what you know, you realize that you, you know very little about everything. But for me, that's the function of art, to reinform that, that idea that, that, you know, how do art become, takes over that specific space between all this specialized knowledge, it's history, science, geography, philosophy, religion, and everybody is moving in this parallel world. How do we take over there and have a conversation that, Kind of challenges everything, and uh, and that's um, that's uh, that's exactly what I what I try to do. Yes, you are activating the polyphonic character of art, which is specific to art. So and then that's that's. And, really and there is a freedom in moving between one thing and the other, but it's true that it's very it, it becomes very dense for people. So yes, I have to control how far do I go because uh, I could talk for hours in each of these pieces, going oh. deeper and deeper. But then people lose interest, right? So I have to lure them with the aesthetic or you know the, the, the trick. Mm -hmm. But thanks a lot, uh, uh, you know Tamara, Claudia, and mm -hmm. Gerardo. It's been a privilege. My pleasure.